Hey everybody, Jason here. So I've just finished up setting up the station forms for a new canoe I'm gonna build. Now, I've got several canoes, but the thing is, and it's kind of funny because I have several canoes, but the thing is that right now I need a canoe that is good for solo tripping. So I have a Rob Roy canoe. It's a, you know, approximately 13 feet long and that's a nice canoe to just, you know, puddle around in the local lakes or, you know, rivers, not carrying much gear at all. Um, you know, it's a good solo recreational canoe. And then I've got the 16 foot prospector, which is really, it's a great tripping canoe for two people. The thing is it's, you know, really deep and beamy canoe and, going solo it can be done but the conditions really have to be right or else you're gonna you know blow around the lake and then I've got the Surewater kayak that is you know it's a beautiful kayak and it's great for being out in the the Great Lakes inland seas um, you know the low center of gravity you know the enclosed deck it's perfect for that situation but what I need is something that I can go out on my own in into areas where I'm going to be portaging and, you know, carrying the canoe, uh, you know, traversing on smaller lakes, larger lakes, rivers, also a canoe that I can do photography and video and also be comfortable fishing in. So I've set up to build this new canoe. So we're going to see how it goes. There's a few challenges. So. Aside from needing a canoe that suits solo tripping for myself, I also have a lot of smaller wood strips. So I'm talking about strips that are eight feet long and under. So I think that some of them are probably three or four feet long. And then also it's a variety of wood. So I've got some pine and I've got walnut, I've got uh, eastern yellow cedar, I've got western red cedar. Really, I'm not sure what else I have in it. So I've got all these wood strips that some of them have been sitting around for years and I hate wasting wood. You know, it's a good resource and, you know, really I should be using everything that I can and minimizing scrap. So I've held on to it. I've hoarded it. So I've decided that with that wood, I'm going to build this solo canoe. So it's a good opportunity to try to build a canoe, what I would say in almost the most difficult situation, you know, really it's probably the conditions that most people build canoes from, you know, unless you're buying a kit boat or all of your materials pre-made, most people need to source out their own wood and, you know, mill it from what they have available. So. I'm not going to be doing that, but I am going to use basically the scrap wood that I've collected over the years.
So the stripping's going pretty good. I've got, uh, what is this? One, two, three, four, five strips from the sheer up. And then I have my few accent strips and then back to Western red cedar. So I had an Eastern yellow cedar that was uh, pretty long, almost the full length. So I used it for the sheer strip just so that I could get a good you know, starting point. Uh, after that, I went to Western red cedar uh, these are all just varying lengths, so I have uh, the longest strips are 8 feet, and then I've got the, the shortest is around 4 or 5 feet. Um, so I've got those, I've got uh, what, 1, 2, 3, 4 of Western Red Cedar, and I've got Walnut, Pine, Walnut, and then back to Western Red Cedar. So because they're all shorter lengths, what I'm doing is I'm staggering the seams. So I've got a seam here, and then a seam here. Uh, one down, uh, none in here, and then another one over here. Basically what I don't want is I don't want all the seams of the strips to you know, be on top of each other. Um, even these two that are kind of close, you know, it's not ideal, um, but it's not too bad either. So visually I don't want you know, seam on top of seam, but also if I was to always line up all the seams in one spot, I might get you know, the strips V'ing out a little bit at that joint. And, you know, likely I'd be able to ferret proper when we get to that stage. But, uh, but still, it just, you know, staggering them eliminates that because it, even if I have a joint and it opens up a little bit, when I put the next one on top and then pull it tight and staple it in, uh, it tends to just, you know, bring that back in because it's sitting inside the cove of the strip on top oh, and, the, and the strip below. So, yeah, it's coming along pretty good. Um, this is all I have for accent strips now. Well, of the dark anyway. I do have a few really short pieces, about a foot long. So we'll see, maybe I can tie it, those in later on. Um, but maybe not, we'll just, I'll see how it looks and go from there. Uh, you know, I'll be honest, originally I was thinking that I might end up painting the exterior of this boat. I thought it would be a mess. I haven't pulled the staples out, I'm not done stripping it, so it may still be a mess. Um, you know, the ugly canoe. But uh, right now when I'm looking at it, I'm thinking it's not actually that bad. So, yeah, I'm gonna keep going with it and yeah, let's see what I can get done.
got the strips coming up the sides now and I've gone past the tumble home, past the four inch water line and at the ends I've pretty much covered the end forms. So now the next couple strips are going to be basically just straight out and flat from the, end, the second to the last form. So this is actually form number six on this boat. So it's going to be pretty flat coming across and you know, more or less, I'm going to be working on the bottom of the canoe now. So working around the ends, I've had to actually uh, use a clamp a little bit, which is tricky because it's so pointy and tight. But, you know, I managed to get a clamp to just help squeeze it closed. And I've actually also had to use a screw and just little pieces of strip. So uh, basically, I put the little piece of strip against the side of the canoe and then screwed through it. Now, of course, that's going to leave a bit of a, you know, a screw hole through, um, but I've only had to do it a few times. The thing was the compound curves were just so extreme, you know, basically up here, the strip is sitting pretty much flat. And then at the end, it's sitting straight. So, you know, you have to, uh, you know, you're, you're twisting the strip, right? So the one end's flat and the other end's standing up and uh, the part that's standing up just always wanted to pull out to be flat so so I did that just to hold it in place and then again I used the clamp and yeah I gotta take that off in a second hopefully it holds um, and I'll start doing the bottom so with the bottom what I'm gonna do is uh, strip it out with a chevron pattern that's my preferred way to do it I find when you do a straight line and uh, cut the strips, you know, nice and straight and bring them together. It does create a nice, clean finish line, but it's also, you know, it's not tricky, but it's just, I don't want to say more difficult either. I think there's just more that can go wrong because we're doing one straight line compared to having each strip individually with just, you know, a, a small piece that just has to come together and have a small, you know, angle cut and then just basically lap it up. So, yeah, it's coming along. It's not looking too bad for an ugly canoe, actually. Okay, I'm gonna get back to it.
All right, so now that we have all the strips in place, the next step is just to basically let the glue dry overnight, and then tomorrow I'll come back, pull out all of those staples, and then do some filling with some thickened epoxy. So I've gone ahead and removed all the staples from the canoe. Now the next step is to just mix up some thickened epoxy and fill any of the larger gaps or holes that might exist between the strips. And then also, if you remember, so I used a, a couple screws here and there just to hold down some of the strips in the compound curves up at the ends. Okay, so I'm going to mix up some epoxy and we'll get started. Okay, so I'm just about to get started mixing up the epoxy and I just wanted to tell you about I'm using a new product um, for the viewers that have watched me before they know that I've used West System and also Mass Epoxy in the past. So for this build, I'm gonna try a different type of epoxy. This is called the Total Boat, all right? So this is what it looks like here. Um, so Total Boat is owned by Jamestown Distributors uh, that I've used for several years for some of my boat hardware and, and building materials. Um, They've got a line of different uh, epoxies and paints, varnishes and whatnot. So I thought I'd give them a try. This one specifically, there's, they have two different types of epoxy. One is a penetrating epoxy and then they've got this one which is a high performance epoxy for doing like fiberglass layups and, and that sort of thing. It's, it works the same way as the other epoxies that I've used. It's got a pre-calibrating pump, so the hardener has a pump that is sized for the hardener, and then the epoxy resin has a pump that's sized for the epoxy. They're color-coordinated, so you can see red dot for the hardener and the label's red. Pretty straightforward. Uh, and being pre-calibrated, what it means is that all I need to do is just do one pump of resin to one pump of hardener. Now, if you're new to epoxy and this is the first video, it's super important that you stick to the calibrated pumps, keep track of how many pumps you do. So what I always do is I'll do one and then one and then two and then two and I keep it tracked in my mind exactly like that. If I was to lose track for some reason, you know, distracted or whatnot, I just ditched that epoxy. So it's really important that you pay attention, do the full pump all the way from the top to the bottom, and let it come back up, then go to the next one, full pump, right, and count them out. For doing a fiberglass layup, I tend to do four pumps each. Depends on the temperature as well. So on a hot day, four pumps. On a cooler day, I might do six because I have a bit more working time. Um, for this, I'm going to be mixing it up to make a thickened epoxy. I'm going to do four pumps. It is kind of hot today, but I'm going to thicken it up and I'm just going to try to work fast and just go from one end of the boat to the other and just fill any of those gaps. Okay, so I'm going to get mixing. All right, well, I've been stirring this for about two or three minutes now, and I've added some, uh, some silica powder and then also some wood flour. Now, wood flour is good on its own, but the thing is if I add some silica powder as well, the silica will help prevent the, the thickened epoxy from sagging as much, so, so that's what I want. Um, this is still just a bit a bit runny. What I'm going to go for is uh, basically like a peanut butter type consistency or mayonnaise. Um, right now I'm kind of like yogurt. So, so yeah, I'll mix this up a bit more, add some more wood flour, and then we'll be set to start filling our gaps.
All right, well, I've given the epoxy time to cure. It's uh, good and hard. And so now it's time to use a few different tools. I'm gonna to use my rasp, I'm gonna use a hand sander, and I'm gonna use my orbital sander with a few different grits of sandpaper. Uh, and then I'll also use, just do some uh, quick hand sanding to just get the hull in shape. So basically now I'm gonna fare out the boat and then do a sanding just to, yeah, get the shape that I want. Okay, so I finished off doing the sanding and the fairing of the canoe and laid out my six ounce fiberglass cloth over top. For this build, I'm gonna be using Total Boat Epoxy. It's their high performance uh, epoxy. It's a two to one ratio and I'm using their medium hardener. Now being two to one, that means that I shouldn't have any issues with uh, amine blush, which is good because we've had quite a bit of humidity uh, last evening it was even a bit foggy outside um, so yeah so the the humidity is a bit of a concern it's also very warm today it's been sitting around 30 degrees Celsius so uh, yeah it's kind of warm so I'm gonna enlist Noah to help me uh, do the mixing while I do the layup uh, the pot life is I believe offhand it's going to be less than 10 minutes. So yeah, I want to really just get it mixed up and then out on the boat as quickly as I can. So yeah, let's get to it.
Okay, so I finished off doing the fiberglass and epoxy on the inner and the outer hull. And now it's time to trim it out with the gunnels and the deck. So I've cut out two of these decks and basically I've just cut them out of some ash. It's actually two pieces of ash that I laminated together. Um, and the overall size of these decks is about nine and a half inches long. The width is based on just the length of a deck, well, the width of the deck that I need to be able to, you know, grab hold, have a, you know, decent hand grab. Um, any smaller than that, and I wouldn't really have anything to grab onto. Uh, another thing that I do from time to time is I'll possibly drill a hole in the middle to just do a, a rope tie off. Um, I'm not sure if I want that on this boat or not, so I've left it out at this time. So. Yeah, so it's a nine and a half inches long by not sure how wide, but wide enough that my hand can fit in. A uh, good thing about small decks is that it overall reduces the weight of the boat. So yeah, carrying it on a portage, less weight is good. So to fix them in place, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use some thickened epoxy. Again, I'm using total boat epoxy and I'm gonna thicken it with silica and then also some wood flour. Uh, I could thicken it with just the silica, but the wood flour is going to add the color. It'll darken the mix, and uh, that's what I want for an overall look.
Okay, well, I've taken the clamps off the gunnels and sanded them down as well as the deck. I've drilled the locations for the carrying yoke and the seat, and I've put some masking tape below the, the gunnel just to stop any of the varnish from running down on the exterior of the hull. Now, I've already varnished the inner hull with the total boat. This is a matte varnish, um, and then I'm going to use a gloss varnish for the gunnels and the exterior. 